Hi, Keith Van Wimmer, Van Tech Consulting. Um, we've been doing a lot of training um, recently for splicers across the country here, and um, in every class we get the question of what causes high loss splices. And a high loss splice would be defined as anything um, that exceeds, you know, if you're going according to standards, exceeds a dot one to a dot three, depending on which standard you're following, um, or um, whatever is defined by your company as being acceptable splice laws. So in going through and, and talking with a lot of the people and watching their, their processes and as they splice, um, we've come down to um, one of the primary contributors or one contributor to um, high loss splices is cleaving. And um, what we found is that uh, the cleaver maintenance that is being done is... Um, well, non-existent, basically. So we've got a few cleavers here that uh, that we're talking about. So, you know, these are NO. This is a V7 or V7 uh, fiber cleaver. Um, it is without the waste basket on it or the waste bin. This over here is the uh, V7 fiber cleaver with the, uh, with the waste on it. This is a CL um, or CI01 Ilzentech, uh, nice little mechanical, you know, purely mechanical cleaver. And then this guy here is just a uh, uh, knockoff of the um, Fujikura, the uh, CT30 splicer. And basically, I mean, all these splicers have the same parts. They all do the same thing. They, they're precision instruments, maybe not the Chinese one, but they're all um, precision. And uh, basically, they're designed to give us a cleave within a specific um, um, criteria. Uh, as long as you know we're not we don't want to exceed a, a one degree of uh, cleave angle etc off of um, off the machines so um, what we're going to do on this video uh, keep it short and, and sweet is we're just going to run through some of the maintenance procedures on the on the cleavers and these are procedures that should be done as part of your daily routine so if you are a splicer or you're or you're just starting um, splicing as you go out and you start doing um, your routine for the day, um, you should run through specific maintenance um, steps before you start splicing. And this, this is defined so that it makes sure that the machine is tuned up, that it's ready and calibrated, um, and uh, that your cleavers are ready to, uh, to give you uh, proper cleaves. So you gotta bear in mind that um, you know, the, the quality of your cleave and the quality of your splice, they're joined. They're, they're directly relative to each other. So if you have poor off angle cleaves, you're going to end up with high loss splices. Um, so let's run through real quick on, on the parts of the cleaver. Um, you know, we have the fiber clamp. One of the favorite things uh, that guys like to do because they believe that fast um, is good. And uh, I just want to say that, you know, smooth is fast. And uh, if you, if you, do this things the right way and take your time and don't have to go back and re-splice or re-enter a case, um, you're probably better off than if you're getting out of burn every 30 seconds. So the first thing we have is a fiber clamp here. And this fiber clamp, a lot of guys, what I'm finding is that, especially on the CT30s, is they, um, they like to leave the fiber clamp open. So they won't actually clamp down the fiber in here. Um, they'll just leave it lying in the groove. They'll do it with, you know, single handed, you know, and they think that, you know, it's, it's, this is the way to, to do a cleave. You know, they'll, they'll hold it in this hand, you know, and, and basically charge it, lay the fiber in and cleave. The problem with that is, is that there's no support for the fiber, um, as the, as the, uh, blade comes through. So keep in mind that, that let's talk about the operation of a cleaver here. So the first off, we have our fiber clamp, you know, and depending on which machine you have, um, they all have different types of uh, um, capabilities. So they can go with a 250, so the bare fiber, they can go up to a 900, and then they can go up to a 3 millimeter, which is um, a jumper. Um, so the cleaver has the clamp that holds your fiber down and keeps it supported while you're cleaving. Um, we have the mechanism, the cleaving mechanism here, which on um, these guys is just a slide, a um, little drawer slide here. We have the wheel in here. So this is your cleaver, um, your cleaving wheel. 
This guy here is um, has 16 positions on it, uh, should be rotated every 2,000 cleaves. So as long as you keep your um, splicer count, at current splicer count, um, every time you do basically a 1,000 burns, you would roll the wheel uh, one position, okay? Um, after you've gone through all 16 positions, um, they're numbered on here. If you can, uh, we'll see if we can get a picture a shot in there. But down in this area, kind of out of focus, there's numbers here. So these are the position numbers. And basically, as you're going to wheel this around, um, once you get to 16, you raise it up one spot, one level, and then go back through the 16, raise it up a, th a second time, go back through the 16, and once you've done that, uh, three times you basically throw the wheel away, put it on a new one. These don't get rotated enough. Um, guys lose count of them, they don't rotate them, and they start to get a little bit dull and worn in that position, and then they'll end up giving you bad cleaves. You'll start getting spurs and things like that. So on either side of the wheel or the cleaver, we have um, pads. And these pads, um, we have an upper set and a lower set. And basically what these do is these create a support and hold that fiber um, firm on either side. And so that way the center part of your fiber is going to be actually stabilized. So this isn't cutting the fiber. When you cleave the fiber, what's happening is as you push this in, it basically takes and puts that wheel and scores the fiber and puts a little notch in it right at, the, at that cleave point. Then... Up here we have what's called the anvil. So this guy, if you can, uh, we'll try maybe and get a shot of this um, in action. It's a little little difficult to, to see inside when it's closed. But what will happen is this anvil, um, you have the cleave on your fiber, and that anvil will come down and bump the fiber on either side of the cleave, and then basically it snaps it and gives it a clean um, clean break. So these guys, um, anything that, that, that changes that, I mean, it's fairly simple, but anything that changes the, the, basically how the fiber sitting in there. So if you have dirt inside of your, in your channels, you're going to kick your fiber up. Um, if you have dirt on your pads, you're not going to get, it's not going to be held. Um, and so as that fiber, as that cleaver comes through, it bounces the fiber up. If the fiber doesn't make this far pad, you're not going to get a cleave. It's just going to it's just going to bounce the fiber, and as the wheel goes through there, as the cutter goes through, it's not going to get a good score. So you got to make sure that that's held down there, and that it's supported on both sides. Um, on the the trash cans, the guys that have the uh, the trash cans, that fiber has to come over into these rollers because when that comes down and these rollers uh, close. They're going to grab onto the fiber there, and then as that arm comes through, it's going to suck up the fiber and put it into the trash bin. Let's talk about uh, cleaning. So the cleaning just requires a couple things. We've got some, um, you know, every every splicer should have their 99% uh, alcohol out there. Um, it, uh, it should be 95% um, or higher um, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, if you have a CVS pharmacy, you can get that. Um, you may have a little problem finding it uh, these days. Uh, a lot of people, I guess, are, are hoarding the, uh, the isopropyl alcohol, trying to make hand sanitizer out of it. Um, but uh, again, 99%, I just put it in the smaller drip bottles here. And uh, we'll zoom in so we can see what's going on. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll just take this. Um, we take our, our uh, Q-tip. Do a couple drops on there, and basically, you know, you don't you don't want this so saturated. So I'll just kind of squeeze out any uh, any additional. Um, so we're just going to clean our pads, clean out our grooves here, make sure those are all nice and and clean. Clean off our other pad. Um, now we just got a piece of fiber uh, that popped in there. So this is exactly, that's actually a good, uh, a good lesson there is we ended up with a little piece of fiber here that was um, basically stuck inside the, uh, the cleaver that um, 
again, you know, when you're cleaving, it could be something that gets in between the pads and holds the pad up. Um, so do watch for that. Um, okay. So again, we're just going to, uh, clean. So one of the things that you never want to do is you never want to touch the edge of that, um, of that wheel. All right. No, don't ever touch the blade with, uh, with anything. So what we're going to do is, um, to clean the blade, what we'll do is again, just kind of get the, you go onto the side and come up. All right. So I'm not rubbing on the blade. I'm going against it and up and that way we keep it and, uh, we're not cutting anything and, and you don't have to clean a lot. I mean, it's just that top part that's, uh, that's actually cleaving. So make sure your wheels don't have any oil on them. Clean those. Um, make sure that you get your top pads again, you know, make sure that you just kind of get all the, all the goob off there and, um, any gels or anything, the top pad on your, uh, on your clamp. Don't want anything sticking there. And that's it. I mean, that, that's basically the, the entire cleaning. You know, if you get a little, little, uh, few little things of, um, of cotton on there, no big deal. And again, I like to make sure that, you know, if I see anything on here, just kind of give it a little, little clean. And that way, uh, you know, nothing's going to fall in there and, and jam me up when I'm, when I'm cleaving. So again, um, that's it. I mean, that's, that's running through all the, all the points. So clean your clamp, make sure that, uh, again, we got a little, little cotton here. Um, one of the other things that I'll do also, um, is I'll take a, uh, just a text wipe, um, not a chem wipe, but a text wipe with their non linting and basically, um, create a little pad and hold it in my tweezers and use that same type of thing as a, as a Q-tip. It doesn't shed as much that way. Um, so again, I hope that this was helpful. Um, again, this, this process, this cleaning should be done every day prior to you beginning to splice. You know, if you have one of these guys, a CT30, um, they're a little more, uh, the, the, the lid doesn't come all the way open. Um, so again, just a little alcohol on there. Give it a little, you know, wipe on the hand. Clean, 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 get up here. Make sure you get in there. We've got our anvil. Get that cleaned off. That and that. Okay. I mean, that's basically it. If you have to do the, um, if you have to do the wheel in these, some of them have a little guard on there. So just lift that off. Again, onto the side of the wheel and go up and up. Don't run anything across that. If you have any little, again, if you have any little cotton uh, remnants there, Go ahead and uh, just pull those out. Not a big deal. Okay. And then replace your uh, protective cap here. All right. Cool. Anyway, I hope that uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope that uh, you learned something. And again, it's not a big deal to do this. It doesn't take up a lot of time, um, but it does actually um, help you in your splicing. Okay. And, and helps give you uh, proper cleaves and... Uh, and um, helps you helps you achieve those low loss. So anyway, kind of long winded. I promise short, so we'll get out of here. Um, if you have any questions, have any comments, feel free um, throw them in the question uh, in the in the comments below. Um, again, Vantech Consulting. We do all kinds of uh, not only the splicer training and the splicing training, um, but we also do testing and OTDR training, etc. So um, if you have any questions. Give us a holler. Always glad to help. Um, I'll put some information in the closing credits here. And uh, have a great day and be safe.